Welcome to iLecture Online and here's an example on how we calculate the power consumed and provided in circuits. And typically the battery or the power supply is the device that provides the power and then resistors and any kind of appliance that you uh, connect onto your power source is going to be the consumer of the power. So therefore we talk about power provided and consumed. Sometimes we also like to talk about power dissipated. Like resistors, they don't really uh, use power, so to speak, but they dissipate power. It's kind of like uh, friction in, in a mechanics problem. When you drag a box across the floor, and there's friction on the floor, you lose energy because of the you know, overcoming the friction. And so resistors in kind of the same way um, dissipate energy by causing some sort of friction between the charges and the resistor, taking some energy out of the circuit. So how do we do that? Well, let's start out by using Ohm's law. And using Ohm's law, we know that the current in any circuit is equal to the voltage provided by the battery divided by the resistance in the circuit. In this case, the voltage is 50 volts, the resistance is 100 ohms, and so that would be equal to 0.5 amps. So there's a half an amp of uh, current running through the circuit. This is the positive end of the battery. You can imagine the current to be flowing through the circuit like that. Okay, now, power provided and power consumed. Well, it turns out that uh, power consumed by any device in the circuit is equal to I square R. So it's the current squared times the resistance. And if we then replace the current that we have by what we just found, 0 0.5 amps squared times the resistance, which is 100 ohms, we can see that uh, 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.0, not 0 0.025, but 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 uh, amps squared times ohms, 100 ohms. And it turns out that amps squared times ohms is equal to watts. And so it's equal to 25 watts power consumed. All right, so how much power is provided by the battery. Well, if we combine now Ohm's law with the power equation, we can get a different form of the equation. So, for example, we can replace I by V over R, and if we do that, let's do that over here, so power is equal to I squared R, and then if we re replace I by what I is equal to, according to Ohm's law, we get power is equal to uh, V over R, quantity squared times R, so power is equal to V squared over R squared times R, so power is equal to V squared over R. So that is another form of the equation. What we can also do is rearrange Ohm's law, and what we can do is instead of writing R, we can write V over I. So if I take Ohm's equation over here, and I write this as R is equal to V over I, simply by replacing I and R, and then I replace this into the equation like that, instead of replacing V over R for I, I replace V over I for R, we get a third form of the equation. We get power is equal to I squared, and instead of R we write V over I, and then this I cancels out one of those I's, and we get power is equal to the current times the voltage. And this form of the equation is what we typically use to express the power provided. So we can say power provided, is equal to I times V, and in this particular example, the current in the circuit is a half amp, 0 0.5 amps, and the voltage in uh, providing the current is 50 volts, and you can see that's equal to amps times volt is also um, watts, so this is equal to 25 watts. So in this case, power provided, and power consumed is the very same in this example. So, which means that the battery produces uh, 25 watts of power to the circuit and the resistor in the circuit consumes all of it, so none of it is returned to the battery. So the resistor in this case is a, con a, a complete consumer of the power provided by the battery. And that's of course an ideal situation because we've ignored the power consumption of the wire. Now the wire has a very small resistance so it's not going to consume a lot of power, but nevertheless, you know, ideally, uh, I know this is correct, but in the real world, the resistance would not quite consume all of the 
power because some of it would also be consumed by the wire. But to give you an example of how to calculate power consumed and power provided in the circuit, here's a good simple example. And now we're going to show an example where that's not quite the same. 